Okay, so let's have a look at creating another basic lab. Let's have a look at creating a basic local area network. So for a local area network, what do we need? Well, we'll have a bunch of PCs. I can have as many as I want, just to make my life a bit easier. I'm going to go for three. And then we want to connect our PCs together. Well, initially what we're going to go for is a generic hub. I'll explain why we've got a generic hub in a minute. If you have a look at the hub, well, you can see it's got all these ports on where we plug our Ethernet um, straight through cables into here. So I need to go and get a cable. Um, now what I do, if I press uh, control when I click this, what it'll do is it'll keep it selected for me. So I can go from the fast ethernet into the hub and you can see it's still got straight through selected down here and into the hub and PC there into the hub. So we built our basic network. Now you may have heard of this before it's called a star network. Why is it called a star network? Well, if we drag things around a bit, uh, you can see that the hub basically is at the center of our star. And you can imagine with a whole bunch of PCs around here, then it would indeed uh, look like a star. So how do we get this to work? Well, what we need to do is we need to configure the IP addresses on these devices. So I could go into the PC, uh, I could go into config and I could type in all the IP addresses, but that's not how it happens in a real network. In a real network, all these PCs will get their addresses from a DHCP server. So what we need to do is we need to go to end devices and get our server up here. If we look at server and we look at the services it offers, you can see one of these is DHCP. This basically means it's got a pool of IP addresses and it gives them out to all the PCs as they need it. Now to make this work, the device itself needs to have an IP address. It can't give itself an IP address. So we're going on to the server's fast ethernet port and we're going to give it an IP address uh, 192.168.1. And I'm going to put it at the end of the range .254 just to keep it out of the way of all the other devices. Now, now it's got that IP address. If we go to the services again and go to DHCP, what you'll see is it's created a pool of addresses from the 192.168.1.0 range. So this means it's going to start doling out addresses .1.2.3.4. And you can see it'll take ages to get to 254, which is where we've got our device. And I'm going to turn it on as a server. So it's turned on as a server. OK, so that's the server setup. We need to connect that into the network. It's just like any other device. It gets connected in as an end device with a straight through cable between the Ethernet ports. Hey presto. So now if we look at this PC, it should. Oh, no, it's not got an IP address. You can see there the fast Ethernet port hasn't got an IP address. Why not? Well, unlike a real PC, which would be DHC by, by default, in Packet Tracer, the PCs in the config fast Ethernet are set to static for you to set them up. If I turn this on to DHCP though, what you should see here is it's going to pop in in a minute. Oops, I've just realized I'm in the wrong place. Need to be on fast Ethernet DHCP. And there you go, it's got the address 192.168.1.1. So our first PC now has got its IP address from the server. To be able to watch it in a bit more detail, why we do the second IP, uh, second device, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the simulation mode uh, clear all the filters and just look for DHCP filters, which is that button there under IPv4. So now we're just looking at DHCP. We're in the simulation mode. I'm going to go to the PC, go to config, fast ethernet zero and switch on DHCP. Now obviously nothing will happen because we're in the simulation mode, but oh, there you go. There is our IP packet. What is it? Let's look at the packet, go up to the top. Oh, it's a DHCP. It's um, uh, the opcode is a 01, so it's a request. It's basically the PC sending out information saying, I don't know anything. That's why all these fields are blank. If you look where it's actually sending the information, down here in the IP layer, its source address is zero because clearly it doesn't know who it is and it doesn't know who to speak to. So it sends it out to this broadcast address. It's called the all ones address, and that means go everywhere on the network. Well, actually, it'll go everywhere on the network anyway because we've got a hub here. A hub is a dumb device anyway. It doesn't know what to do with packets that come in or frames that come in, so it's just going to black them out anyway. It goes everywhere. The two PCs will ignore it because they don't listen for broadcast, but the server does, and the server will reply. 
and if we have a quick look what the reply says the reply says I get in there in a minute the reply says well here I am I'm the server 192.168.1.254 and I'm broadcasting back out and I'm telling you your address is 192.168.1.2 and uh, other bits of information as well now clearly you can't send it directly to the device because the device doesn't know its own address yet which is why it's going to go broadcast back out so how does it actually work well again the PC that sent it accepts it so we should see a green tick on there and it will then reply accepting that address which again gets broadcast and when it comes back this is what I want you to know notice now when it comes back if you look at the IP addresses they are still 192.168.1.254 still being broadcast back out and basically down here in DHCP it's now specifying right this is your address and you've got that address so that goes out notice at the moment the PC has not got an IP address see it's not set and if we play that last frame it arrives over here at the PC and there you go the PC has got its IP address so that's how DHCP works right we'll come out of simulation mode we'll just look at this last PC here Obviously it's not got an address yet. Let's just go and set that up for DHCP. So fast Ethernet DHCP. And they go 192.168.1.3. So now our three PCs have got their address from the web from the DHCP server. Just to check uh, if they work, what we can do is we can go in here, we'll go to desktop and to the command prompt and ping. 192.168.1.2 and hey presto we've got a ping going across our network if we actually want to see that in action let's just snip to the simulation mode again now we want to look not for DHCP packets but we want to look for ICMP so ICMP is here this is where pings are, are sent in this type of frame format in the simulation mode let's just do that exact same thing again 192.168.1.2 we'll go for 3 this time it's over the other side oh forgot to type, type ping ping 192.168.1.3 and remember in the simulation mode so it won't happen there's our ping let's have a quick look at it before it goes out what's the outbound details notice it's from 1.1 going to 1.3 so that's all ok everything in there is as expected Let's forward it out. Goes into the hub. Remember, the hub's a dumb device, so unfortunately, the hub sends it everywhere, even though it should only go to one particular device. That's a disadvantage with having a hub at the centre of our network. Um, and if we play Capture Forward, obviously the reply comes back, and again, that will be broadcast out everywhere, even though it's got the right addresses on to go to the destination. So that's why we don't tend to use hubs anymore because they're dumb devices. Even when everything's right to send it to a particular location, uh, the hub isn't able to understand the data and just basically sends it out of all ports. So rather than use a hub in a real network nowadays, we'll get rid of the hub. What we would tend to do is actually employ a switch. So here's a switch. We're just going to take up a generic 2950. If we have a quick look at it, oh sorry I deleted it there, it was a bad move. Let's just stick it back. Try again, let's take the 2950. Let's have a quick look at it. There you go, it's a device with loads of Ethernet ports on so we can plug all our network ports. And you can see it's actually got a ton of ports, That's because that's how we build star lands. And what we want to do is quickly connect those back up. So remember press control when we've got lots to do saves you having to go back down and get the line every time and it doesn't again matter what order we put these in okay you notice some orange lights on there which i'll explain in a moment hopefully oh, i'll get that one oh, there we go i got it hopefully some things will start to go green before i get to the end but if not not to worry i'm getting faster at this so they're still all orange this is because in a commercial switch like this one the switch is actually before the port comes up and starts working 
it's actually just testing for us that there are no loops in our network. So it takes about 30 seconds for this to go orange, or you can just say capture forward, and that speeds up time, and now it's all hunky dory to go. So, um, oh, we're actually still in simulation mode. So let me just um, come out of that just to stop that happening. And let's just go back into simulation mode. I just want to do that exact same ping again now that we had before. So pull it up, 192.168.1.3. So a look what happens now. So it's the same packet, but we've got a switch in the middle. Let's go capture forward. Oh, I think we've still got some of the old one going. So let me just stop all that. Um, and right, everything's gone. We've got ICMP. So I don't know what went on there. Slightly missed it. 192.168.1.3. There is our packet. Let's go forward. So a quick look where the packet is going. It is going from 192.168.1.2.1.3. Remember what happened last time. The hub was a dumb device. It didn't know where to send it, so it sent it out on all ports. And now, hey presto, it switches it to the correct port, and so it goes to the correct device. And similarly, when the reply comes back, the reply comes back to the PC. And hey presto. There you go, we've got our first reply. So that's the basics of a star network with a hub in the middle where it doesn't know what to do so it broadcasts it out everywhere. We put a switch in the middle and it's able to switch it to the correct port. We've also demonstrated how you can allocate IP addresses in a simple local area network like this by using a DHCP server. Okay, thanks very much.